Welcome back to my channel guys, my name is James. Today I have a special treat for all the chocolate lovers. We're going to be making a chocolate cheesecake, but I'm going to be adding a few special ingredients to it. I'm going to be adding a raspberry liqueur in the cheesecake, and then I'm also going to be doing a, a raspberry compote at the end as well. Cheesecakes are one of my favorite desserts to make. Or should, it's not a good idea to make them all the time for obvious reasons, but this is a very decadent recipe and I'm sure you're going to love it. So before we get going, be sure to like the video down below, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done already, and let's get started. So first things first, we're gonna start with the crust. We want to weigh out our butter and then we're going to either melt it or you want it at room temperature. Then we're going to weigh out our sugar that we're going to use. You can use white or even brown sugar if you want. Then we're going to break up our crackers. Now you can use Oreo cookies if you want for this. You can also use normal graham crackers. I'm using some chocolate crackers. We're just going to break them up, put them in the blender, blitz them super quick. Then I'm going to add the crackers into the bowl. I'm going to add the sugar and the butter and I'm going to give it a quick mix. And more or less you want it at the consistency that I'm showing you in the video. You want it this grainy, sandy consistency, or a little like wet sand, where it'll hold its form if you clump it together, but it will also break apart if need be. After you get it to more or less the same consistency, we're going to take our pan that we're going to be using. I'm using a 10 inch spring form pan, and we're going to just drop the mixture in, and we're gonna give it a few shakes, and now we're going to take say either a cup or a ramekin or anything that has a flat bottom to it. You want to make sure that the bottom is as flat as possible and that it doesn't have a dip. Otherwise, this is not going to be flat. You can check the depth if you want by either putting your finger and to me, that's more or less good enough. I'm just covering it back up. Now, I'm only laying this crust on the bottom. I'm not doing the sides. If you want to do the sides, you need to make a little more and maybe put a little bit of butter around the side to help it stick a little more to the side of the pan. All right, after you compact it as much as you can, we're going to preheat the oven and we're going to put this in the oven for about 10 to 12 minutes to give the crust its crunch. So after the timer goes off, we're going to take the crust out of the oven, set it aside to let it rest, and we're going to start work on the filling. To start off with the filling, since this is going to be a chocolate cheesecake, we're going to put chocolate in it. So first, we're going to cut up some chocolate. You can use either dark or milk chocolate, whatever you want. Then, we're going to take what's called a bain-marie, and we're going to melt the chocolate using basically a water bath. You're just going to take a pot, fill it up with water, put it on the stove, turn it on, wait till it comes up to a bit of a boil, and then put the other bowl, either metal or glass, on top of that to melt the chocolate. You're gonna put it on low heat until it's melted. Then we're going to turn the fire off and let it sit and rest while we finish the rest of the filling. Now for the rest of the filling, you're gonna take a rag or a piece of paper towel, get it wet and lay it down and this will help stop the bowl from moving. Otherwise, if you don't have it, the bowl's just going to move around while you're mixing. First, we're going to add the cream cheese to the bowl. You wanna make sure that the cream cheese is at room temperature. It helps to uh, work with it. Then we're going to add the sugar. We're also gonna add a bit of brown sugar. We're gonna give it a bit of a mix real quick. Okay, after you mix it, wipe the sides down. Then we're going to add about a quarter teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Then we're going to add a few tablespoons of cocoa powder. Again, we're going to give it a bit of a mix. While you're mixing, be sure to wipe it down so you don't miss anything. Then we're going to add a bit of heavy cream. 
Again, give it a bit of a mix to incorporate it. Okay, now for the secret ingredient. We're going to be adding some raspberry liqueur. This is totally optional if you want to add it. And you can add more than one shot or tablespoon if you want. It has a lot of flavor, so this is gonna taste like chocolate and raspberry. Okay, now we're going to add the eggs one by one. Now we're going to add the chocolate to it. Just going to pour it in. Now before we pour the filling into the pie tin, we are going to wrap it because we're going to put this again in a water bath in a bain-marie. So I'm going to do a double wrap just to be safe. Put a little bit of film on the bottom. Okay, we're almost done. Now, if you're using film, you can take another piece like I'm doing now, make it long, about this will do. Cut it off, make a rope out of it, and stretch it very, very thin. You're gonna take this, wrap it around the bottom, and you're going to tie a knot in the bottom. Sometimes the film will not stick to the pan, like this is a Teflon. So it's not going to stick to it very well. You have to do this, otherwise it's going to fall off. We're also going to put a bit of aluminum though, underneath this. The plastic is to stop the water from coming in, and the aluminum is to protect the plastic from the water and the metal, because the metal is going to be very hot, it's going to boil, and we don't want it to stick or melt to the metal. And if you want, you can add one more. It's a good idea to put butter on the edges because the more times that you use Teflon, the more it tends to wear and the less reliable it is for not sticking. So if you put just a little bit of butter on it, it's going to guarantee that it's not going to stick to the pan. After you're ready, we're going to preheat the oven to about 180. We're going to put the cheesecake in for about 10 minutes and then reduce that to about 150 centigrade for about 45 to maybe 55 minutes, more or less. For the bain-marie for the oven, I tend to put the tray in the oven first and then fill it with water. It's a little safer if you're gonna be walking around with it and also a little safer if you're going to be putting it in the oven in a very uncomfortable position. So when you're doing this, just keep in mind to be careful and not pour the water into the cheesecake tin. Is it happens, trust me. Now for the raspberry compote. This is going to be a very easy and simple compote. It's just going to be raspberries, a bit of sugar, and then our liqueur. All right, once the pan's hot, we're going to add the berries to the pan, and we're going to add the sugar. Let it cook for a minute, and now we're going to deglaze the pan with a bit of the liqueur. Now we're gonna let this reduce a little bit, and you're done. Now you can either leave this as it is, as a bit of a compote, and you have all the seeds in it, or you can strain it and make a sauce out of it, it's your choice. After you take it out of the oven, guys, be sure to let it rest for about an hour or two. Let it rest for a few minutes after you take it out of the oven. Take off the aluminum, the plastic, and if you can remove the spring form as well, do that. Then put it in the fridge if you have space and let it rest before you cut it. And if you want, you can even make a ganache for it. But all in all, I think this recipe is super easy and with the compote, it balances the chocolate quite well. So go ahead if you want to. If not, it's good as it is. So guys, thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to ask me down below. And if you're interested in making more of a traditional type cheesecake, I made one not too long ago, which I'll leave the link in the description down below that you can check out. And I have many, many more recipes on my YouTube channel as well for you to check out as well. Thank you for watching, be sure to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys again very soon. Take care.